Hey everyone, I'm Beefluffy Game Dev. I make some tutorials on game development with a focus on clean and reusable architecture. In my dialogue system video, I briefly mentioned the term game flow, and I said that I would make a video on that subject later down the line. Well, guess what? The time has come. Let's talk about game flow. But uh, what is game flow? Perhaps I am talking about the state where the player's skill matches the game's difficulty, right? Well, no. I'm actually talking about the state the game can be in and how the player can transition between those states. For example, the player can be in a title screen state, and when they select a save, they are transitioned to the game world state. That is pretty much what game flow is about. As usual, all the code I produce is available on my GitHub. Feel free to use it as much as you want, I left a link in the description. Now, before I begin, I actually have some news. With the kind help of a watcher, I have set up a Discord server. So if you want to talk about game development or if you have some questions, feel free to join the server. You'll find an invite in the description. So how do we represent game flow? Well, usually, when a game designer comes around and asks you if you would kindly accept to implement the game flow, they'll most likely show you some kind of a flow chart. And how, shall I rhetorically ask, can we represent a flow chart in code? Well, that can be with a finite state machine. Just in case you don't know what that is, a finite state machine is a model composed of states and transitions. That machine starts at given states and transitions to other states depending on some inputs. For example, if the player selects a save, they will transition from the save selection screen to the game world state. There might of course be some loading along the way. Usually, I would make my own game flow state machine. But having had my eyes on Unity's visual scripting language bolt for some time, I figured I might as well give it a try. This is probably for the best, since I should remind you every once in a while that you shouldn't always reinvent the wheel. Just as a quick disclaimer, this is not a tutorial on how to use Bolt. I don't even know if the stuff I'll be showing is the best option, and I have no idea how performant my solution will be. This is closer to being a video of me messing around to find out how well Bolt can handle game flow management. However, should you want a tutorial on Bolt, that can be arranged. Let me know in the comment section. Recently, I've been playing the game Alba, an indie game focusing on exploration and the preservation of wildlife. As such, I'll be taking Alba's game flow as an example. Like pretty much all games, Alba starts by showing several logos, such as the one of the studio that created the game. Then, we move to the title screen, where the player can start new game, load an old one, go to the settings, or exit the game. If the player starts a new game or loads a save, they'll then move to a loading screen while the game world is loading. And once the game world is loaded, the player can now wander around and enjoy the game's calming gameplay. Occasionally, the player may encounter some cutscenes. Depending on the inputs the player presses, they might open various menu pages. And from the pause menu, the player can either go to the settings, return to the title screen, or even exit the game. This flowchart might not be 100% accurate or complete, but with this we should be able to have a pretty convincing game. Now let's go to implementing it. Before we actually start implementing the flowchart, let's discuss the various scenes we'll be needing. First of all, we'll need a scene that will always be loaded. We'll call it Persistent Scene. It will contain the state machine, as well as some useful managers. It will also contain some UI elements that can be displayed anywhere in the flow, such as loading screens and pop-ups. For the logos, you don't need a scene, since you can actually handle them in Unity's player settings. Next, we'll need a scene for the title screen and a scene containing the game world. On top of that we'll have another scene containing the HUD of a game. And finally, a scene for the pause menu. For the sake of simplicity, we won't handle cutscenes, but that can be the subject of a separate video. Anyway, in total we should have 5 scenes. Once we have created all the scenes we need, the next step is to manage the loading of each scene at the right times. This is where the flowchart finally comes into play. 
As such, we'll create a flow state machine game object in the persistent scene, and taking the flowchart from the previous part as a basis, we can obtain the following state machine. Inside the states, we'll mostly handle the loading and unloading of worlds. In some cases, like the pause menu, we modify the time scale so that the game world stays properly paused. Of course, loading worlds can take some time. This is why we'll need a loading screen. To keep things simple, I'll base my implementation on Game Dev Guide's tutorial. If you don't already know that channel, check it out, it's a goldmine of information. Now that we have our loading screen, the next step is to actually implement the transitions between our various states. The easiest case is input-based transitions. For example, to access the pause menu, the player has to press escape. Luckily, Bolt already provides some input detection events. In this case, the transitions from the game world to the pause menu and reverse rely on the following events. The second case I'll be handling is when the player clicks on specific buttons. For example, to access the game world after selecting a save to load. Normally, we could use another event that Bolt provides to detect when a button is clicked. However, the UI being in another scene than the state machine, I ended up having to go for another solution. The solution I went for was to implement some scriptable objects called flow triggers and a flow event channel to notify when each flow trigger is raised. That way, I can simply plug the raise flow trigger function directly from the buttons on click unity event. Those events can then be received from a custom event unit I made for Bolt. So to keep the same example as earlier, I made a flow trigger for the save selection, I then plug the flow channel with that trigger on the right buttons on click event. And finally, in the transition between the title screen and the game world loading, I plug the custom event to the transition trigger. I won't detail here how the custom event unit works. All you need to know is that it took me several painful hours to finally understand how to get it working. However, if you want more information on custom bolt units, that can be the subject for a separate video. Finally, the last event we'll need is an event to know when a world is loaded. To keep things simple, I created a flow trigger that is raised when all scenes loading tasks are complete. That way, to know when to transition to the next state, all I have to do is use the custom bolt unit to detect when that flow trigger is raised. And with all that, the game flow is now fully implemented. The player can now move between all states as intended, be it from the title screen to the game world, or from the game world to the pause menu. Right now, the game only handles a single save. However, should you want a proper tutorial on save management, let me know. Now that we have implemented our flow state machine just like in Alba, I wanted to talk about a tiny improvement we can bring to that flow. As it is right now, the first time the player launches the game, they'll be shown the logos and then move to the title screen. However, games usually tend to skip the title screen, since the first time the player launches the game, there are no saves to load. Instead, it allows the player to change a few accessibility settings, and then brings the player directly to the game world and its first cutscenes. This is what we call the first time user experience, FTUE in short. To implement this FTUE, let's create a scene to display the accessibility settings. That scene will be loaded when the player enters a specific state called FTUE, and to enter that state after the logos, we'll have to check if there are no saves that can be loaded. Otherwise, we simply go to the title screen state. And with just this tiny change to the flow, we have implemented a feature that makes the game feel way more professional and polished. And there we go. We've managed to use Unity's visual scripting language Bolt to handle the flow of a game. Overall, I found this experiment to be interesting. It appears to be a pretty powerful tool, and can be helpful if you have little programming knowledge. However, I found that some parts of Bolt aren't very well documented, especially when it comes to creating custom units and events for Bolts. As such, should you want a more in-depth tutorial on Bolt, let me know in the comments. Furthermore, you may not want to download Bolt just to handle the game flow. As such, should you want a proper tutorial on game flow where you get to write all the code, that can be arranged. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. 
If you did, please consider liking and subscribing for some similar content. And if you have some questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section or join the Discord server. I will be glad to answer. In any event, have fun coding and see you next time!